Right, Man City are going to sign Nunes from Wolves for £45 million. Pounds. It's a really interesting transfer for a number of reasons. I'm going to break those down in this video. Uh, but for, uh, Nunes from Wolves for that kind of price, it's a very interesting deal. I think it's largely a very positive deal for Man City. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. We'll be covering all the Premier League weekend's action. Let's just start off with what we know about Nunes. He's a, a progressive ball-playing midfielder that can drive with the ball. Good ball player, can kind of spray the ball around and obviously... Hasn't scored many for Wolves, but the, I think he's only scored one in the league. Um, but that goal was of, of, of fantastic quality. But the quality of the chances he's created for other people is immense as well. And at the age of 25, a Portuguese international midfielder for £45 million pounds in today's market is, is, is cheap. That's the sad reality of football. Um, and when you're looking at someone like Caicedo going for £115 million, quid, uh, I think City have made a very st uh, smart, strategic decision in this deal. Now, obviously, Wolves spent £42 million on him last summer. So he's got a long-term contract. He's only really shown what he's worth in the Premier League for one year. So there's a bit of a gamble there for Man City. Is it a little bit sad for Wolves? Um, it is a little bit. They're really struggling financially. They're trying to you know, get money in. I think they're trying to keep themselves in the league for another year and try and skim off as many profits as possible. I don't know why that's happening. I'm not really a massive up-to-date Wolves fan, but it's a bit of a shame that they are selling basically all of their prized assets, Neves, Matinho, etc. That is a bit of a, a shame, but on, on to City's benefit, you know, to get 45 million quid for it, for him, which is basically the same price they paid a, a year earlier with inflation, is, is, is unbelievable in terms of the value of it. And then Tommy Doyle is getting a move to a Premier League club with that deal. Uh, it's about 5 million. I don't know if it's directly connected but it looks like it's kind of helped swing the deal that's nice as a city fan obviously um both his granddad's played for man city and uh, he's a man city you know he's, he's a man city fan he's, a, he's someone that loves the club he was never really going to get minutes for the for the side unfortunately so to see him go to wolves a premier league club managed by gary o'neill a former kind of player in his position is the kind of small sweet um bonus on top of this deal uh let's just talk about what we know about nunez again as I, as i said a progressive midfielder someone that can uh, create chances for people and you do feel that City need that kind of energy in midfield um, I know we beat Sheffield United but there were points we were very slow very lackluster against Sheffield United uh, he's going to be someone that picks the ball up drives with it uh, I think that's what we were trying to sign Rice for as well a kind of similar role maybe Rice is a bit more defensive a bit more physical but that kind of Ilkay Gundogan lay the ball off to someone it gets whipped into the box and you're the last man on the back post for example I, I can see Nunes doing that um, and I can obviously see Nunes being in, in, in intrinsic in the build-up play that City are trying to do this season. Um, and it, he's got good physicality. When I've seen him um, for Wolves, uh, unfortunately, last season, it was often tracking back and doing a lot of defensive work. That's just the nature of where Wolves were last season. You know, he was he, he worked hard. He had good energy, good mobility. He's, he, he seems like a very quick midfielder for me, which is obviously really nice. I think City are lacking pace. And it's definitely been a... It's definitely been a factor for Guardiola. I think quality for quality, Guardiola comes in for Laporte. And I've seen him burn a couple of people. So he's got a bit more uh, energy in his stride, a bit more energy. Speed, sorry, a bit more speed, a bit more acceleration than Laporte. So you're kind of replacing Laporte with a bit more legs. You've got Doku who's got way more speed than Maris, Maybe less technical quality, but you know he's got a massive seal in Doku. And then you've got someone like Ilkay Gundogan, who, who was a masterful, a bit like Frank Lampard, arriving late into the box. Um, but he wasn't the quickest player in the world. And we're signing Nunes. So I think this is operation, get loads of pace around Erling Haaland, um, create space so Haaland can do his business as well. Because obviously when you've got three or four or five midfielders around Haaland and they're all slow, they're all trying to cut inside, um, it's going to be hard. You need people that run on beh uh, you know, behind, beyond Erling Haaland. Beyond Erling Haaland is what I'm trying to say. Um, so that there's space for cutbacks back to him. There's space for Julian Alvarez. There's space for... Um, Jack Grealish to get on things hopefully more and I think uh, Nunes is a massive part of that what what else do we know about the deal that he obviously didn't show up for training for the last couple of days obviously Robbie Savage um, from what, one interview that I always remember he said he, you know, he did a similar thing uh, at Birmingham City under Steve Bruce trying to go to Blackburn Rovers with Mark Hughes and that's always a, a story that's stuck in my mind if I'm him then I'm probably doing the same thing but as a fan of a football club uh, obviously I've got mates that are Wolves fans not nice, uh, not nice that you're seeing people trying to leave the ship in that kind of way. Um, that's just a small criticism f f from from my perspective of the deal. 
Um, I, I think signing a player like that going on strike isn't always, it leaves you a little bit of a bitter taste in your mouth, especially if he's only been there for one year at Wolves. You know, I think if 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 you know Matinho was really up in arms about not being let you know let join a, a big club that he wanted to, to to join, for example, then it's a different story. Same with Neves, maybe even with Saudi Arabia, maybe even with Mitrovic when he tried he, he kicked up a fuss going to Saudi Arabia and Fulham didn't quite get the money they wanted until they did. Obviously, it's Saudi Arabia. Uh, this one is a little bit poor for me. I think that the, the, he knows that Wolves are in a really bad situation. I still don't. You have to let me know in the comments, lads. Why are Wolves accepting such a little fee for him? He's probably worth 60, 70, 80 million quid. Um, that the fee is a real testament to how bad Wolves are doing financially. If I think, unless anyone's got this completely wrong, uh, let me know. Thinks I've got it completely wrong. So in that regard, uh, that's the only small criticism. And an another criticism. This is my, my gut reaction. What can I say? The smart answer, the City fan answer would always be a quality player joining the club. We're lucky. Fantastic. Let's go and win a Premier League. Let's go and compete again in the Champions League. And we're lucky enough to say that. There's no question about it. Um, small thing about do we need it? Do we really need it? Especially with Phil Foden playing a lot of minutes in there. I think that we definitely need it now uh, in terms of De Bruyne being injured. But when he's back... You know, I think our best midfield is probably Phil Foden, De Bruyne and Rodri. So Nunes is, is going to be, I think, largely a bench player right now. That's the reality. Uh, with um, you know someone like Bernardo Silva that can come in there as well. So you could play Bernardo Silva, De Bruyne with Doku on the right. Suddenly Phil Foden's getting slightly less minutes. Suddenly you're spending 45 million quid on a you know, 25-year-old. He's still, he's still waiting to kick on. Um, and is he going to get the minutes? Look at Calvin Phillips. It's a very reminiscent deal of Calvin Phillips kind of signing the biggest player, the best player from near enough relegation uh, threat and clubs every single season. It's a, it's a tactic that Alex Ferguson did. Uh, you know, he tried to sign Alan Shearer. I'm not saying they're relegate, uh, relegated candidates or anything in Newcastle, but you know, these big names, you know, the Dion Dublins of the world, the Cantona from Leeds, Alan Smith from Leeds, um, you know, uh, Tevez from West Ham, Berbatov from Spurs. You know, the big clubs do suck up quality from other clubs and gamble and see Will Nunes, you know, if Nunes lands and he plays well, this is Guardiola's favourite position. He'll pick him every single week and a month on Sundays. He'll pick him every single week if he if he hits the ground and goes amazing. And I think he will. He's got very he's t so talented. You know, the more I think about it, the more I think he's he, he's a supreme talent. There's just that small question mark maybe about the way he left. A little bit of a sour taste in my mouth as a football fan. And then just the squad rotation. He's going to play 30, 40 games next season. Are they all starts? Is he happy? Will he be played in his favourite position? I'm not so sure. It looks more of a squad filler at the moment than it is a, an actual fundamental change to Man City's midfield, which is obviously neon, uh, nigh on impossible to kind of replicate after last season. But he's trying to do it. He's trying to replace Ilkay Gundogan. And he's done it by the looks of things. £45 million. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. I'll see you soon.